All right, we got this one from Rocky. As a student loan holder, well, what can we do can to help reform the student loan system? Uh, well, look, here's what we can do is we can try and get the government uh, out of it a little bit more. Here's what happens. I've talked about this before, but basically, if you have grants or subsidies or scholarships, and there are so many now. I mean, my brother got one for being some kind of a, I don't know if it was a foreign exchange student from Canada. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Oh. But basically, why wouldn't they tack that on if they go, sure. oh, yeah, there's a grant here for another $12,000. So mm-hmm. if you just tell me that you can't afford it, well, you know what, Uncle Sam's none the wiser. Yeah. And so this just... It, it just creates inflation beyond something that we can even comprehend. And you know what? That really happens in any industry where you have a lot of regulation and government incentives. Think about that. Healthcare, right? That's where you see crazy inflation. Uh, higher education, that's where you see crazy inflation. And probably um, in some ways, uh, like uh, transportation. Hmm. Right, you see crazy inflation in a lot of ways, or at least prices uh, go up because they consistently get bailed out uh, at the airlines. Um, uh, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, yeah, yeah, those would be, but mainly education and healthcare. Right, these are when people say, "Oh, we need more government." These are the most regulated industries that you right. can think of. Uh, oh, energy, of course, too. Yeah. And you could see that directly under Barack Obama. So mm-hmm. I don't have yeah. time to go through all of it right yeah. now. Thomas Sowell has written about it. It's it's pretty clear that the more subsidies, scholarships, and grants that have been made available, the more expensive school has gotten. The good news is you can find some private universities or go to a community college and start there. And there are a lot of great trade schools. Um, but yeah. uh, but yeah. outside of, yeah, what were you going to I was just going to say that you should tr- treat college as if it's a service. Treat, right. treat school as if it's a service. Go in there and say, is the price worth it? Is it worth getting a loan to get this service, yeah. to get this product? Right. If it's not, then you can make a decision. If it is, then make a decision. And look but, at it as ROI. Yeah. Look at yeah, it as yeah. that's something people are like, yeah. I want to do this. All right. But will you make money doing that? No. And who's going to pay? You. It's not how this works yeah. in the real world. Now, yeah. I know that's how it works in Biden's world, right. um, but and, that's and not a, how it yeah. should work. A lot of these schools are bailed out by government money. There are some that don't take government money. There right. are some schools that do. Look like for Hillsdale. that. Yeah, Hill, them, Hillsdale does. Yeah, New St. Andrews in Idaho uh, does the same right. thing. So that, it's something that's worth uh, you know looking into. See if the, if, you're, if the school takes government money. If they don't, their rates actually might be a little bit more affordable. Right. Um, yeah. It's one of those things. It's, it's pretty hard to put that genie back in the bottle, unfortunately. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so we're just going to have to ch- The good thing is the only way that you put that genie back in the bottle is if there is some kind of life al- societally altering technology that is made available that turns that entire industry in the the education higher education is an industry on its ear ah, can you think of anything can you think of anything that might fit that bill in the age of information mm-hmm. can you think of anything that might make all of that information that you had to pay several hundred dollars for with one textbook available to you now without that par- uh, price of entry. Here's the thing. At this point in 2020, you don't need to go to school to get an education. You need to go to school to get a piece of paper. That's really what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. And if, if people were doing their hiring the way we do at this company, where we often do it blind, yeah. um, some of our, some of our uh, best employees have come in um, who really hadn't finished school. This has happened before. Mm-hmm. Um, then the piece of paper wouldn't matter. Unfortunately, you have a lot of companies that still are a part of the system, and especially when you're talking about sectors where they tend to lean more left. They want that piece of paper, despite the fact that they know you would probably have someone more capable and more qualified who was just a maven of this studying it at home. Hmm. It's changed. You used to have to go to a library, and it was hard. You didn't know how to use a bibliography. We we used to have to learn how to read a newspaper Hmm. in school. Remember that? Yeah. And then I forgot, because I went back and tried to read a newspaper. (laughs) <laughs> Before yeah. the f- I yeah. couldn't, it was like, oh, oh, that's right. It's not just turn the page. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we don't need that anymore. So really, if you want to be educated, and this is also why it's important, I will say probably in this office and certainly with my family and friends, this is anecdotal and we don't have the data on it yet because who wants to present this data? There is a direct <laughs> correlation between people who don't go to school, incur no debt and immediately start saving when they work. Uh, who are probably more wealthy than those who go and earn four-year degrees. Yeah. I, I can't imagine yeah. that's not the case anymore. Yeah. yeah, right. Especially when you look at how people are making more than people with college educations in trades. I know so what, from a lot of my friends, they have student debt out the ass, and I didn't. Yeah. I didn't go to those bigger schools. Right. And I found a career that I liked, and you know, it, it, it's. You're right. You already it, start it, working. You start off from, mm. you both start off from zero and then they accrue all you're in the debt. Yeah. You're in the black and yeah. they're in the red. I can tell you this, me and, uh, me and Johnny boy, we, we didn't, uh, we decided no, no student debt. Mm-hmm. And the re- everything that you see here, all the, li- all the wondrous Christmas lights touch, uh, was brought to you by about $45,000. 
that I saved. And I started working really young, by the way. So I started working like at 12 doing Arthur stuff. I was allowed yeah. to buy a bike right. one season. I was allowed to buy like a paintball gun and yeah. everything else was saved. My parents helped me save. Hmm. And then uh, I was touring and doing stand-up in my mid-teens. So basically from 12, but really started working more full-time at 17 until I want to say when I went completely independent after maybe 25. Yeah. I'd saved that money and that's what started uh, the studio. That's what got the simple TriCaster that we had back then and the DSLRs, mm -hmm. uh, which I never would have been able to do. I mean, could I have taken out a loan? Maybe. I don't know. Um, and yeah. I, had other, I had other people who yeah. worked for me and people who worked alongside me who did take on student debt. Right. And we were in very, very different places. Now, yeah. that's not the same for everyone. If you want to be a lawyer, if you want to be a doctor, just don't buy the lie that you all have to get a piece of paper to be successful. It's not true. Watch Good Morning Mug Club live every Monday through Thursday at 10.15 Eastern.